Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting of November 7th. And we'll begin our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have uh, just one announcement. As uh, we all know, the presidential election will be held tomorrow, Tuesday, November 8th. And the polls are open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. Uh, the first item on our agenda is uh, talking uh, about a solar panel project. And we have uh, folks from uh, Onyx here to talk to us about an assignment agreement that this board has to sign. So would you like to begin? Hi, I'm Maureen Carroll with Sun Edison, and um, we're working together with Onyx. And we came to you uh, two or three meetings ago to um, let you know about our financial partners. So very happy to introduce you to them today. And they'll be taking the project through construction and ownership. Uh, so I'll pass it over to JD to, to uh, talk a little bit about Onyx, who Onyx is, and their role in the project. Very good. Thank you for coming tonight. Mm -hmm. John. Thanks for uh, giving us the time tonight to discuss the project with you guys. Um, I was asked to uh, come tonight and, and answer any questions that you might have about our company Onyx and um, the project itself, where we are in, our, in, in the acquisition with Sun Edison. Um, so we could start by, if you guys have some questions or you want to know the history of our Onyx, well, I, I think that might be uh, good if you could just give us a quick rundown okay. as to who you are and what and what you've done. Onyx was started in October 2014 um, through a joint venture partnership with a company um, in Manhattan called Solops and Blackstone Energy Partners, which is part of the larger Blackstone Capital Partners. Um, Blackstone had deployed probably about $35 billion worldwide in the renewable space. But in the United States, they really hadn't focused on, on the mark, the various states and markets. So they, they were looking to put together a, a team to deploy basically their equity. Um, so they formed the company. I started in December of 14, and we have um, been growing the company to the point where we have 64 people that work for us. We have three offices, one in Manhattan, which is our legal accounting um, and finance team, Robbinsville, New Jersey. We have our operations, our construction, our engineering, and our asset management. We have our own internal asset management group that manages our projects long term. Um, and then we have an office in Sausalito, California, which is our utility scale group. It, vastly different than what, what I do for the company in commercial and industrial. They build big, giant solar farms. Um, and um, we have a charter with Blackstone Energy Partners to deploy a, a billion dollars of their equity. Um, and then from there, we have a, a second phase, which is probably somewhere about $4 billion range. Our, our tax equity partner on this, these projects is Credit Suisse. We, we had orchestrated a um, 150 megawatt um, tax equity arrangement with Credit Suisse um, two years ago. It's about $300 million. So, Inevitably, we have about $1.3 billion to deploy of, of equity and, and capital. Um, Blackstone is going to own the project long term. Again, we have our own asset management group that once we commission the project, we will make an introduction to, to your, your team here, and our asset management group will come up. They'll sit down. They'll review the project with you from a billing perspective, O&M, you know, um, what um, hours of, of operation will be allowed on the site as far as th that's concerned. Um, but leading up to that, my responsibility on the project development side as, as VP of business development is to take the project through the approval process right up until when we're ready to file our building permit. Um, 
and then our construction group steps in and, and they'll build the project, but I'll, I'll stay with the project throughout the whole process. So if something is not right or you guys have questions, you, you can pick up my, the phone and call me or somebody from our, our construction engineering group, somebody from master management, it, it doesn't matter. If you guys have a question at any phase of the project, we're accessible to you, um, you know, as far as that's concerned. And we are, um, Hopefully tomorrow, closing on this asset as well as a, a series of others with Sun Edison, and um, you know, again, part of my role is to work with with the town and on the project um, to understand maybe some of the approvals that were put into this thing as far as maybe footprint, um, some concerns that the fire chief might have, stuff of that nature, and I'll take that back to our construction group and make sure that as we further the permit drawings that that information is in, in the drawings. Um, so that, that's, that's our company and, you know, again, as we said, we, we're going to own the assets long term. That's uh, Blackstone's plan and, um, you know, they're, they're looking outside of renewable and, and wind and inevitably it will be battery storage and other technologies. Right now our core focus on the Northeast, you know, and Massachusetts is, is the solar market. Good. Uh, we have Nick Sicello here, who is uh, chairman of Pembroke's Energy Committee. Uh, Nick, would you like to participate in this? Sure. You know, since our last meeting in September, when Monty was here from Sun Edison and TRC, who's the, the engineering firm uh, working on the, the design and the permitting phase, uh, they met, you know, the board. And since that point, we've been working on an amendment to the original uh, contract that really the three highlights of that is the assignment to um, Onyx, uh, the change of the construction start date to December 31st, 2016, and the change in the guaranteed commercial operation date, which is June 1st, 2017, all with new changes to the business <coughs> um, You know, for the first time, I think in the history of this project, we do have a line of sight to project completion. The amendment, you know, that we're working on with town council, uh, with Sun Edison, uh, and also Power Options. We've been in con contact with Power Options. Um, they have reviewed all this as, long as, as well as Town Council, um, and they support uh, the, the amendment and the partnership with Sun Edison and Onyx. So we've been working with them. They're, they have been basically our consultant throughout this whole process, um, and they have endorsed this and along with their other projects in their, in their solar program that are in the similar um, boat that we are in. So, um, you know, that's what, you know, we're here tonight to really, you know, to, to introduce the folks at Onyx um, and then really to talk about the amendment and the, the details of that so we move this project forward and we can start to, um, you know, the various phases. And like I said, for the first time, we have really a line of sight to project completion. That's pretty exciting. It is. Uh, Ed, I know you've been working on this with uh, Nick and with town council on the assignment. Did uh, you have some information you'd like to give? Well, uh, this amendment it does a few things. It kind of moves back a couple of dates. Originally, the uh, construction start date um, was in the first amendment of December the 15th, and that's been pushed back to December 31st, um, and the completion date uh, we now have, instead of May the 8th of 2017, it's been pushed back uh, to June the 1st, 2017. Um, and then there are some provisions about um, some of the things that could pop up between now and, and then, which would uh, uh, slow down the process. Um, for the board's information, um, the uh, planning board assistant notified me today that the official uh, public hearing on this project will be held November 28th, uh, which is a Monday evening, and it'll be down in the Veterans Hall. That was uh, worked on between um, the uh, TRC, which is the engineering firm, and uh, planning board assistant, as well as Mike Folletti, the landfill manager. So uh, that'll be the uh, public hearing in which uh, there's the Planning board assistant told me that there will be like 65 different property owners that will be notified. Um, 
they have to have a three week notice before the public hearing so that those are all going out um, in the next couple of days. So that'll be the public hearing that's required by by law um, in order to for the planning board to issue site plan approval. Will we plan to have Veterans Hall complete for that evening? That's correct. So all the boards and commissions that have shared that are have been notified that they're not allowed to use that space that Monday night. Okay. Uh, any questions from the selectmen? Dan? Uh, yes. The, well, it's important to the, to the board and, and to the town as a whole that we have uh, a new partner that's that's solvent and has a positive financial backing, which was a, um, a, a grave concern of ours. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that you folks uh, are able to take over the project. I do want to make sure that this board and the public know uh, uh, what is coming forward for the pilot program. We have the payment in lieu of taxes. And what has changed, if anything, on that? If you could speak to that, I, I'll look to you, Nick, and Ed on that. And also, if you can also comment on the project closing, uh, the bond for, for the demolition of this project when it when it's, sees the end of its life. Well, I'll address the first part. You know, as I mentioned earlier, that there's no uh, change to the business terms. So there will be um, a tax agreement called a pilot that will be um, finalized uh, between town council and Sun Edison and Onyx. I believe Onyx will probably be the, the other party to the other party. Um, so there's been no changes to the business terms. The business terms are in the, uh, the original PPA. Uh, there's just, just the, the actual form that that's going to go on. And town council, uh, we actually mentioned that to town council recently about getting that going in a parallel path so we can um, get that finalized and executed. So, you know, again, the business terms are already been negotiated. It's just more of the finalization of the PPA. So in addition to that, um, the I know that the town has received the first rent check, right? That's correct, right? Sure. So, but so since we signed the original PPA in uh, August of 2015, there's provisions on um, uh, rent, you know, and say you know we we chose to do a rent vehicle versus a lease, uh, but that's all in the PPA, and Sun Edison and Onyx have um, you know met that. Uh, provision in that, and, and, and it's forward the town the, the that rent check that was part of the original PPA. So, so none of the business terms of changing with this amendment. It's just more of the assignment, and some of the timeline has changed slightly uh, in order to get this done from where we are now to project completion. So, in terms of the bond, I know you, um, again that's you know town council is will be working on that um, with Onyx. So I don't know if you want to speak to the removal bond, but that, that's another piece that has to be done on a parallel path. Um, yeah, yeah Nick, just, it, just so I can explain my motivation for asking these questions. The folks in this, in this room are intimate with the project, so uh, people who are listening, uh, maybe not tonight, but in, in the future on, on these tapes, would like to know. So I just want to make sure that everyone is aware that uh, no, none of the terms are changing. So if you could just speak in that vein. Yeah, no, thank you for raising it. I think, you know, three revenue streams is the best way to sum summarize it. You're getting the energy savings, you're getting an annual rent, and you're getting the pilot payment. So all three of those revenue streams will continue through the life of the project, and the bond will protect you if there is any issue where out of your own choice you want to remove it, or um, we, you know, there isn't an entity that can remove it. Typically, the bond cost will take into account the scrap value of the steel, which is quite high. We typically provide an estimate uh, to you from, uh, you know, probably from Onyx's, um, you know, uh, licensed engineer that shows what the estimated cost of removal of the equipment is, and um, an estimate of the of the bottom line, which is roughly usually. You know, somewhere around the order of eighty to one hundred thousand dollars, because it's actually quite simple and a ballasted system to remove it, and a lot of the parts are reusable. Um, and then uh, Onyx and Sunad would work with you as to how you want that bond to be put in place, a guarantee or a letter of credit, um, 
and it's a pretty simple agreement. We'd be looking to Power Options, who's helped other towns put these in place to have a simple format that uh, you guys could, um, that, that we could finance a, a bond or a letter of credit for. Thank you. Would you like to add anything to that, John, at all? Or? No, I think they've filled in it. I, as Nick said, we don't, we're not going to be changing the business terms. I mean, they, they, you guys agree to what's on Edison. We, we understand we have to follow that. The, the assignment really is just changing those two dates. Um, one of the things I'll, I'll share with you guys is because of the requirement um, with DOER for the SREC 2 um, qualification, you know, we, we're going we're gonna to commit to spend 50% of the construction costs. It, you know, so we're, we're doing that over the next couple weeks. So, um, you know, we, we're not going to want to invest 50% and then wait a year to build the project. You know, part, part of my directive with our company is to build the projects, get them built, you know, um, not, not acquire them and then put them on a shelf, you, you know, um, just share with you guys. Our incent we, we get incentivized at Blackstone to build the projects. So it really means a lot to our group, you know, to, to acquire them, take them through permitting, order the equipment and get construction involved to build the project. Um, so I, I mean, I can give you my commitment that we're, we're not going to take our foot off the pedal. It's probably, we're probably going to want to accelerate it even quicker um, because of the qualifications with DOER and making sure we meet all of the, the construction um, spending portion of it. Thank and you. that's why, as Ed mentioned, we're speeding along, submitted all the materials today for local permitting, and we're aiming to move equally fast on the permitting uh, post-closure use permit, uh, which is critical. I don't know if there's anything else, big milestones in the schedule. I think you summarized it well, but maybe just take us through the five or six big milestones to COD. Okay, and also, so you guys are, we, with TRC working um, on this project with Sunnets, and we've worked with TRC before. I I've worked with TRC in my prior career in commercial real estate. We, we thought there's a real continuity with keeping them involved in the project, especially because they've worked with the town and, and Sunnets. So that our plan is to do that, and we've asked them to stay involved beyond just the post closure, but do the electrical design work for the permitting process. Um, instead of bringing a new engineer out and trying to reintroduce them to the project and maybe having some uh, lag in between. We just thought it was better for everybody. Um, as Marty said, you know, once we um, acquire the project tomorrow, we we have a process that we go through, and it, and we are, it's already been approved by our financial team internally. Um, we then will have our construction engineering, construction engineering accounting, legal, um, asset management involved in the project in the beginning in the design of the project um, through procurement we have our own internal procurement team so their directive is going to be to procure enough equipment that we meet the 50 percent uh, requirement um, and and you will be you guys will be working with a lot of people from our team in, in different facets of the project and once we construct our project we then, uh, with our tax equity partner, as Marnie said, we, we, we package up the project with all the as builts and all the final uh, documentation and everything. We submit that to our tax equity partner and we go to what, as Marnie said, COD. Um, so, it, you know, it's a series of steps that we're going to go through and, and, you know, we just want to answer any questions for you guys, be accessible, and, and let you know that we're, you know, we, we want to build a project, not don't want to, we want to build it as quickly as possible because of the qualification. Um, I don't want my construction guys screaming at me because um, you know we're waiting on, on uh, the P cup to come back in February. You know we're we're going to try really hard to push the DEC as softly as possible um, to get a response on the P cup so that we can then go to the next step with you guys. You know because you know we're trying to manage the back end of the project and if we can gain a week or two by helping, whether it's DOER or P, the, you know, DEC, to get approvals, then we, we'd like to do that. Can you just say how long construction once you move ground to done to get those? We're, and we'll, we're going to send you guys a schedule too. I mean, we're, we're projecting probably about, a, I want to say 120 days, but 
it's it's probably gonna it's probably gonna drop back to about 90, and, and we're gonna give our construction team about 90 days to build the project. Um, we're working with a um, a couple of groups that built quite a few landfill projects up here in large ground mounts, you know, so we know they have the capability um, as far as that's concerned. And part of what we're we're doing with this project too is any any interconnection. Um, requirements, any environmental, we're going to split from our construction group. Our construction group and engineering is purely going to focus on the solar project themselves. I'll worry about any of that, those items so that they're not, it's not taking their, their focus away from the project. Good. Yes, Dan. Uh, one thing that I've seen hold up projects in the past uh, when it came to tying into utilities, uh, it's all the work on the site. Uh, you know, including the, uh, the electrical shed that you, you'll have to build uh, is all internal to you and your team. Uh, do you foresee any issues tying into the, the grid with the uh, major utility carrier in our area? Um, yeah. So uh, National Grid is definitely um, a challenging entity to work with and sometimes is on its own schedule, so there's a certain amount, you're right, that uh, no developer can control. Um, I've, I've definitely seen times where, for good reasons, right, a storm coming, they were supposed to interconnect you, but they have to go, you know, service, you know, make sure they're ready for the storm. So there are things we can't control, and that is, you're right, why sometimes you don't see anything on the site, but, you know, and it looks complete, but there's still some time to connection. Um, Sun Edison and Onyx is starting to join. We have a weekly call with National Grid. Um, there's two uh, milestones where you demonstrate you're serious to National Grid and they should prioritize starting design and scheduling you um, to procure the equipment they need and to schedule their guys on site at the end. Putting 25% of the estimated costs that we're paying them overall um, is one milestone, which we just did. Um, and so they now know that we are, you know, we've shared with them our schedule, we're talking with them every week. We make another deposit, um, and they continue to design using that money and get ready to do the site work. So um, we've certainly had challenges with them in the past, and we are on them every week um, in a very detailed manner, working closely with them. As Marty said, we're we're going to make the 75 percent remaining balance payment to National Grid. We we've already. Um, notified them that we'd like to set up a date to do a site visit with them just to review the work and and from our perspective we're going to release them to do their piece of this project they they will most likely depend on their schedule they might be finished before we are and that's perfectly fine with us um you know we're, we're doing something very similar in brockton and and in winchenden you know brockton's a little bit easier the, the interconnects like right across the street um, but we told National Grid we, we would prefer that they finish their work, um, whether it's over, overhead utility poles or the, the feeders coming in or any, any type of equipment they're going to need, and have that in place before we're even done with construction. Um, as Marty said, they're, they're very busy right now, and um, not only just with managing the utility itself, but with, with the solar industry in Massachusetts as a whole, Eversource and National Grid are, are very busy, um, and, and they do schedule weekly calls and, and, and weekly progress of, of projects. You know, we, we prefer not to wait for them. So from our perspective, I mean, I have a meeting in, in Albany with the New York team, but we were in contact with the Massachusetts group last week and said, listen, th these are our projects we're acquiring. You know, this, this is the day we're going to wire you to balance the money, and we want you to go. Um, so. Okay. Does the board have any other questions? Yes, Matthew. So there's a couple of questions. First one, how many watts do you guys predict this plant producing? <laughs> yes. Do you have that offhand? I don't have that offhand. Um, I think that's probably something that we provided to... An updated PB system? <laughs> right. I mean, obviously... Well, a savings the, chart, but the, right. I think the more relevant than the watts is the percentage of the town's energy use that this will be offsetting. So we provide a general estimate of the watts and the savings. Um, right. You know, the once the design, I believe TRC now has all the information they need to do the final design, that will determine the actual size. But the preliminary plan was like a, it's about a three megawatt mm -hmm. system. 
and you know, based on that drawing and so the, the actual site, maybe. Yeah. It, yeah. you know, might be small, it might be big. I haven't seen the final numbers, but yeah. Sun Edison has given us uh, that we have a provided with a um, an estimated um, you know output annual production, and obviously that'll be fine tuned once the final design has mm -hmm. been approved. So we'll continue to try to maximize the overall energy that comes out of the facility through getting up to building permit level design. Um, and then we will... But once the you know system is up and running, obviously it's a net metering system where the power doesn't get used on site, it goes back into the utility. The town receives net metering credits that, can, that, that then gets applied to the various town accounts. And you know, it's estimated to be about 80% of the town's uh, electrical needs being produced by the solar project at the landfill. So the town will be, it's the other 20% that the town will be paying the regular utility rate, uh, but we estimate about 80% will be coming from the, the solar project. Great, good to hear. Yeah, what, what I'll say to you guys is that Sun Edison did their design and they did their annual production review with their engineers. We do our own internal, even though we've accepted what they sent us, we're doing our own internal review. We will share that with you guys, it's not a problem. Um, our engineer group does some very comprehensive uh, modeling. In some instances, we'll have them do 3D modeling of the project. So um, I would say what you've agreed to at Sun Edison, we, we will hold, but if you give us about a week, we could probably share our updated uh, modeling with you guys, it, it's not a problem. And to follow up that last question, is the information about how many watts or how, what percentage this is offsetting, is that going to be available to us or only to you guys? Oh, no, no, no. You guys will have access to the monitoring of the project. Um, we will, in this case, we will have uh, cellular on monitoring the system with a revenue grade meter. What our asset management group will do is inevitably when we get close to the construct to energizing the system, um, they'll come sit with you guys and we will inevitably point that information to the town, Nick, yourselves, and then you guys will have your own page off of that monitoring system that shows you what the annual production is and you know, the other variables. There's all kinds of things we can do in the yep. future. We can put it as public outreach. We can put you know something in the library, for example, that would that you know someone can call it up or you know that or even the town hall. Or, you know, so there's there's things that we'll look at in the future on how to get that information to the public yep. so they can understand. Uh, you know, as an educational component too, there's a huge educational component. Gigantic so, educational you know, component. So we can get the schools involved, and we can maybe have something in the science lab. So in the future, once we're up and running, you know, that information from that meter could go a, a number of different ways and be used uh, for a number of different purposes. But we will be able to see what that uh, system is generating on a regular basis. Arthur has a question. Yeah, I just want to go back to page 3, uh, paragraph 2.8, the removal bond. Can you explain that so that we can kind of grasp it? Um, is, is it the same as a performance bond? Um, I think so. In some ways. Yeah. Um, I call it yeah. decommissioning because the idea is that that money is there for the life of the project as yep. opposed to a performance bond typically is maybe during the construction cycle. Um, so this is while the project is operating at any time. So this will be for the 20 year period or whatever? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. that's because you're right about the performance right. bond. Yeah. It would take you up to construction when it's turned over to us. Yep. You walk away and we're basically stuck with anything that goes wrong. Yeah, this is different. This is whether it's a letter of credit or a bond, whatever the, our attorneys and your attorneys work out, it's there for the duration. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Yes, Matthew. Does your company have control of where this energy goes? No. The utility is there. It goes on the grid, and the electrons go out on the grid, and they really control where it goes. That would be actually an interesting feat if we ever could steer where it actually went. No, we, and Ron, we know where the credits are going. The credits yeah. are different. There's, yeah. a, there's a schedule that will work out um, with, you know, Onyx or Sun Edison. Yep. It's called Schedule Z. Yep. That, you know, that's, you know, based on a certain percentage for each account, uh, the, a certain percentage of the generation generated from the project will go obviously back out to the grid and will be credited to the town accounts through the net metering credit. Uh, the town has the ability to once a year. Once a year to yep. adjust those percentages. So the highest 
you know, just, you know, if the high school is the largest uh, user, you know, that'll probably see the largest percentage, um, but the town can't adjust that once a year. Yep. So it's a, it's a schedule, mm -hmm. schedule Z that's, that's uh, up, you know, initially established and then updated once a year. And, and that's done with our asset management group. They'll come in at the end and sit down with Nick and, and you know, some, whoever's involved with it, and they'll go through the utility bills and, and we'll f ask you where you want it directed. So you have a, ho you have a host site and then you have satellite sites. And that's all on Schedule Z. Any other questions from the board? Uh, we have several people in the audience here that are residents in the town. I would ask them if they had any questions they would like to ask. Not on this project, myself. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight, by the way. Uh, now, the purpose of, uh, of our meeting here tonight is uh, there's a legal document called an assignment. Uh, that this board has to agree to sign and so we will be working after that directly with Onyx and uh, so if there are no other questions regarding this assignment of this project to Onyx um, I would uh, look for a motion to move ahead. So moved. Motion to move ahead as you say about the project. Thank you, Bill. I have a motion from Bill. Is there a second? A second. Second by Matthew. Any other questions? Dan. Uh, just one last question. Ed, for the public's information, could you just state that town council has reviewed this agreement? Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dan. I, I'd like to also say that uh, we did have a committee of people that uh, met with our attorney, and they had an opportunity of raising some issues and having a discussion with our attorney. And uh, it was from that meeting that our attorney met with other attorneys and came up with the document that we have in front of us. So we, we were definitely uh, in on all of this. So I am very comfortable that we've covered those bases. But, uh, so we have a, uh, a motion and a second. Any other questions? All in favor of this uh, vote to accept this assignment, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, I deem it unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I'd also like the board to vote to, to uh, accept the amendment to the power purchase agreement. Uh, thank you, Ed. Uh, so I would need a motion on accepting this amendment to the power purchase agreement. So moved, you know, so Bill has made the motion. Thank you. Is there a second? A second. Second by Matthew. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor of accepting this amendment, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, I deem it unanimous. Are there any other questions from uh, uh, Power Options, uh, Sun Edison? Uh, yeah. Thank on X. No, no, just 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 <coughs> oh, you talk Ed, about the information we're waiting on. You can mention that. Uh, yeah, uh, we are. I think, as I mentioned before, really anxious to submit our uh, state level permit because there's a 72 day clock, um, and there's some information from the town that we're hoping uh, that's really stopping us right now, and we're hoping to submit by next Tuesday at the latest. So um, we've already been working with Mike Valenti, but we look forward to your continued collaboration on that front uh, over the next week. Yeah, as Marty was saying, there's a couple of more hoops that have to be jumped through. Uh, one is including uh, the post-closure, uh, mm -hmm. the P-cup, as they call mm -hmm. it, right? That's the mm -hmm. post-closure for usage. Yes. So, and that has to go through DEP. Mm -hmm. right. So that's yes. one so it, hurdle that we have. And then, of course, the public hearing with the planning board on November the 28th. Mm -hmm. So TRC has had some challenges because I think EPG has not been directed by the board to play an active role in this. So if there's um, a way that you could sort of authorize EPG to work more closely with us so we're called the EPG is Environmental Partners Group who was the consultant firm for the cap in the landfill. Right. And I just found out from Mr. Bellini that mm -hmm. they wanted to be, that they need to be actively involved and that was, 
you know, an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, sure. seemed sure. like an hour ago, but right. it was today. And so yes. I, I concur with Marty that that uh, I'm going to be getting a proposal from EPG, you know, to act as our consultant for the DEP here. Right. So that got that that ball rolling. Yeah, very good. Well, let's let's not lose any time uh, on our end. Yep. We've we've been really uh, pushing you folks to to get a move on, <laughs> and now I would hate to stumble on our on our end. So Nick, Ed, right. Lou, right. if you can just make sure the pressure stays on these folks, I'd appreciate it. Well, and John, you're going to be our main contact. I'm your main point, point of contact, yes, sir. Okay. So any questions? Just please pick up the phone and call. So probably, Ed, would it be all right to say that we would go to you to contact John oh, if there's yep. any issues? Or John, get a hold of Ed if you have any issues Understood. that we can certainly help you with. Because this board and everybody <clears throat> in Pembroke would love to see this project up and running on June 1st of next year. Yep, I think you, you guys, uh, you, you share the same sentiment of a couple other towns that we're working with, and, and we understand you know what you're you're hoping for very good well thank you both for coming in tonight thank yes. you for having us and uh to look forward to working with you in the future to get this done thank you thank you thank you, you. nick and i i gotta also say before you leave uh, i want to say thank you very much to you and your committee you've been on top of this for a long time and I uh, would say you're our point man on this project. Great, thanks, we appreciate so, that. So thank you very much for we'll your get help. Closer, so that's, that's the good news. Excellent. Thank, okay, you. thank you. Next on our agenda is the Town Memorial Committee. This is an important week in the town. Uh, we have an election, of course, tomorrow. But on Friday, we have Veterans Day. And uh, we're looking forward to that celebration. We have Linda Osborne and Dave McPhillips here tonight. Good evening. Before Good evening. I start on Day, I just wanted to thank the citizens and the selectmen for our town meeting passage of the War on Terror Memorial Monument, which we've been trying to work on for the last six or seven years and uh, kept putting it off because of money situation here in town. So uh, we were able to pass it and I'd like to just give you a very quick report. We've uh, contracted with Quincy Memorial, which we have worked with before and they've already started with polishing up the monument and they've told us it will be ready for dedication on Memorial Day. Oh, so wonderful. we're really excited and we're working on and if anyone has any connections with some people, uh, the speakers, we'd like to hear because we want to make this a very big occasion here in town. It's a long time coming, so we'll keep you updated on it as it comes along. But uh, it's on the works now, and there's a few things we need to decide what we're going to put on it for wording and stuff, but colors have been picked out, it's ordered, they're starting to polish it up, and it's a go. Good. So anyway, we're working on Veterans Day on Friday, and Mr. Stone, we will be able to say a few words. I will. I'd be very. To ask you before. I'd be very happy to. Thank you. Um, I, that's good because we already did the uh, program. Be <laughs> 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 stuck down. <laughs> So we will be meeting at the Pembroke Community Middle School, which seems to work out very well for it this does. program. Uh, we have the chorus and the Legion will be doing refreshments after. And we have a few speakers and music and a lot of things to honor our veterans. So we hope that uh, all of the citizens of Pembroke can come and all of the selectmen will be there. And as our tradition, we have the governor's proclamation, and I'm happy to say it is this year's. <laughs> Sometimes we don't get it in time, but we never tell you that. Before. Excellent. <laughs> so our veterans agent, David McPhillips, is going to read that for you. Very good. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening Dave. Dave. Proclamation from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. 
whereas since the Commonwealth's colonial days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. And whereas, on November 11, 1918, this armistice was signed in the forest of the Champagne by the Allied nations in Germany, ending World War I, the war to end all wars, after four years of conflict. And whereas, that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans. And whereas, there are approximately 388,000 veterans living in Massachusetts, and whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country, and whereas we honor and salute those who served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage, and whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who served their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11, 2006 to be Veterans Day and urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston this first day of November in the year 2016 and of the independence of the United States of America, the 240th. Charles Baker. Thank you, David. Good. Well, if you have any questions, we'd be glad to ask some. But we hope to see you all there on Friday. Any 11, questions? 11. 11. 11, 11. Any questions from the board for Linda or Dave? Well, I'd just like to, again, uh, Linda, thank you and your dedicated committee who year after year have put on this. And it's really a great program. And thank you. Now that we have Dave helping you, it's really going to be it's very a good day. Yes. <laughs> Thanks very much. We'll thank you, you for coming in. Friday. All right. See good you night. Friday. Uh, we have the minutes of October 31st meeting. Uh, like a motion to approve. Uh, motion to approve the minutes of October 31st, 2016. Motion second. by Arthur, second by Bill. Uh, any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none. I deem it unanimous. Uh, does anyone have any old business they'd like to bring up at this time? Hearing none, I move on to the town administrator's report. Uh, nothing, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, we have a need for a quick executive session. Thank you. Uh, ask the selectmen any uh, issues anyone would like to bring up. Like Matthew, so yes. Do any of the people who came out tonight have anything to say to us? Yes, I'm wondering if uh, we just heard on uh, Facebook and the posting about the 15 uh, housing units that are uh, being looked at uh, down right across from Greenwood Avenue right on Center Street. And when, is that being talked about this evening? No. It is not. Right. Okay, so that was... Yeah, that, that project which was discussed with the uh, Board of Selectmen and the ZBA and the Planning Board a year ago or so, and then that property was sold, and uh, that now will have to go back to the ZBA and the planning board. So that ha that process has to start all over again. Okay. All right. That that was why I was here. I'm not sure about anybody else. Uh, my, myself and my wife. But, right. Uh, so if that wasn't going to be talked about, that was why we were here. No, it's good. Like I said, it's going to be it's going to be in front of the ZBA and then the planning board. Okay, and would, I'm not a rebutter, I'm uh, a resident of Mountain Avenue, have been since 1959, and uh, uh, just concerned about traffic patterns and growth. Sure, absolutely. Well. I think um, the best thing I would do would be to just keep in contact with the building department. Uh, Tracy Grady, who's the secretary of the building department, she's the one that would 
be uh, be aware of the first step, which would be the ZBA. So I would uh, I would stay in touch with them. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. As an Army veteran, as an Army Ranger and a Vietnam veteran, I applaud you for your Pledge of Allegiance before you start your meeting. I think it's great. I see what you did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Glad you came in tonight. Thank you Thank for your you. interest. Is there any new business to come before the board? Mr. Chairman, I spoke to you before the meeting and asked for uh, a moment uh, during new business. And I had had a thought, and I've run it by um, Dave Shea, who's the president of the Chamber of Commerce. And um, he thought it was a good idea, and the Chamber would leap at the opportunity, and, and Lou thought it was a good idea, so I know I'm on the right track. Um, it's about uh, the Ask the Selectman part of the um, agenda is to bring forward a business uh, once every uh, meeting and give them two, three, four, five minutes to, you know, tell what they do, you know, that um, we're Samson Lumber and, you know, we are, you know, alternative to Lowe's, the big store, um, you know, by Route 3. And, you know, they're a local business and they'd have the opportunity to discuss their business and what they do and what they bring to the town. And, I mean, you have restaurants, you have Tiny and Sons Auto Glass, you have all sorts of um, people that would love to have the audience that we have on Monday nights to give their business an opportunity to be heard and to, you know, there's nothing like the reaction of, you know, you, you do something or buy something and you find out you could have bought it in Pembroke and helped out the local merchant. So um, I'd like to try it. I mean, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but I, I think it will, and I think that... Um, you know, it shows that we're business friendly and that we want to be proactive. So I'd like um, the committee to uh, consider that and, um, you know, support it if you are uh, so inclined. Any questions from the board on Alpha's proposal? No, it sounds like a pretty good idea. Yeah, I think it sounds like a great idea. Uh, yeah, it gives local folks a forum to discuss their business. Uh, you know, buy a local if you can. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how many times have you bought something and said, gee, I wish I knew I could have got it in Pembroke, you know? You get drink water trailer sales that, you know, instead of going up to Route 1 in Saugus to get a pot, you can get it right in town and spend five minutes. You know, there's a lot of businesses in town that are not generally retail to the public, as an example, and they provide a great service and, you know, a great product that we can buy right here, so. Uh, could I make a recommendation to that? Sure. Well, we have 10 or 15 businesses, which we have, I think, over 400 businesses in Pembroke. So if we have 10 or 15 or 20 that all apply at the same time, um, maybe we should do like they do at the town meeting and have a lottery and reach in and pick out a number and notify them that, you know, when the, the time is that they're coming up. So uh, it would only be fair. Otherwise, it, it um, they could go on and say, well, why are you always picking these people and I never get picked? So if it goes into some kind of lottery system to pick them, I think it would probably work. So. Yeah, I, I think, you know, how you pick them is um, important. And, you know, the, the basic thing is to get get them in and give them the opportunity to be heard and, uh, you know, take advantage of the, the cable audience. And we've got, you know, two cable audiences in many cases. So, yeah. Um, you know, it would be a good opportunity for the business people, I think, so. Yes, Ed. I, I just, um, when Arthur shared that with me today, I, I, I just want to make sure that the, the board is within its authority to have that kind of situation on a public channel. That's all. I, I just want to make sure that the board is within there. Yeah, we're not charging for it, so. Right, you know, I understand. It, it's, um, yeah, make sure it's a part, you know, our agreement with PAC TV and so. So will you look at that? And I, I, I would and I would be happy and hope that uh, it is something that the, the board can do. But I'd be happy to report back yeah. to the board. I think we week. have, uh, I think um, the board totally agrees to do it. Yeah, I'll save yeah. my motion for a week and give it a chance to. Uh, That'll be excellent. Thank you, Arthur. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Uh, upcoming issues we have on November 28th at 7 p.m. We have a public hearing. The Board of Assessors 
for the fiscal uh, year uh, 2017 tax classification hearing. Also on November 28th, the request for appointment, Eric Hurt to the Recreation Commission. On December 12th, we will vote our annual liquor license renewals. Uh, does anyone have any other business or comments that they'd like to make? We have November 28th as the public hearing for the Board of Assessors. We also have that as the public hearing for the um, solar field. Uh, we just made the appointment tonight. Is that going to conflict in any way, or can they be done back to back? Or Good point, Arthur. I don't, would have to ask Ed, I guess. Well, let me work with Matthew downstairs and see 